Hi, welcome back to Game Geeks. I'm your host, Kurt Weagle. Today, Wild Talents, the role-playing game. Superhero role-playing in a world gone mad. Some people think of this as sort of the sequel game to Godlike. It can be if you really want it to be, but you don't need to. What does Wild Talents bring to the table that Godlike doesn't? Very good question. Wild Talents brings you a broader point of view on supers. Now, if you want to know what Godlike is about, go back and watch episode number five, because that's what we reviewed there, and it's an interesting game. Wild Talents uses the same basic engine, the one roll engine, where you roll a pool of 10-sided die, and then you look for matches, and the matches are calibrated based on height and width in terms of how well you do and how quickly you do it. This is a supers game in a very dark and grim setting. The very first example combat they give you at the front has one of the PCs, who looks like a fairly form formidable PC, pretty much get their butt kicked by a Tyrannosaur by getting stepped on, and then the other guy has to deal with everything. So this is a not a supers game that easily sets you up for, I am, you know, Power Man, and I cannot be stopped by anything. It's not really set up like that. You are flawed, you have weaknesses, and it's pretty easy for you to die unless you know exactly what you're doing. That being said, it's worth looking into, particularly if you like unusual superpowers, if you're sick of heat rays from your eyes or hands, if you'd rather be a hero that can dissolve himself into a mass of carnivorous centipedes and flow over things, icky, but this is the game for you, and it's worth getting for that reason alone. It really allows you to build your powers from the ground up. It gives you entire sets of rules where you can be as creative in designing your powers as you want to be. And it also gives you sort of a cafeteria approach. There's, there's the cafeteria approach where it gives you sort of prepackaged things. Flight, uh, armor, strength, heat rays from your eyes. And then it also gives you more the gourmet approach where you can really design and tailor it how you want to. The only issue I have with this game, and it's the same one I have with Godlike, and it's my fault, is I don't feel like I'm always creative enough to come up with really interesting superpowers based on this. For some reason, you know, if I had to come up with a, a where I could have an offensive ability that involves communicating with plants, I kind of fall down there somehow. I'm not entirely sure why, but I seem to have a block there. I think I'm Personally, I'm a bit more calibrated for pre-existing powers, but it is a beautiful game. It is very well produced. It has a lot of great ideas reading through it. Worth the price of admission alone is a setup for sort of designing your own superhero universe. Can supers change the world? How much can they change the world? What's the social inertia? How do people react to them? And it bases it on basically a four or five color matrix that you normally saw in superhero comics. For me, in my opinion, that is worth the price of admission alone, like I said, just so you can take a look at it and design your own superhero world. If you like supers games, if you like things that are so, that you can really build your power from the ground up and detail your character as much as you want to, have it be a somewhat gritty game in that even though you can really tailor that in yourself, have it be a somewhat gritty game that it's not like, ha ha, bullets bounce off my chest constantly. This is really a game worth looking into for you. They give you sort of a pre-existing world. It's sort of the next step forward for, from the godlike world to a certain extent. It is really well worth looking into. So, for Game Geeks, I'm your host, Kurt Weagle. If you have any questions or comments, please refer to contact us. Good day and good gaming.